so blessed with our families and with our friends and people who have come back year after year. And even after they've gotten married and had their children, when they come to New York, they want to come back. A lot of them met their husbands here, a lot of them met their wives here, and they want to come back and see my children, my, their best friends with my daughters, their best friends with my sons. And when they come to New York, they always want to come back. And, and of course, they love to see my husband because he's such a character. And they love to annoy him because he's, you know, that's what he is. And they love to see him. People felt safe here. They loved coming here. They had fun. They'd come and have dinner here. They'd come even, I mean, we have friends who, you know, didn't drink. They came here five, six nights a week. You know, they just came to have fun. It was like really a living room. And everyone feel, you know, everyone has their favorite spot, table three, the corner of the bar, back here by the fireplace. Right where we're sitting, this fireplace is always just such a nice place. During college, I come back here. Even Jimmy, one of my best friends, wasn't even here. And I come here and I sit down and grab a seat and we have a few other people there and we just chat. Let's have a great moment. Michael's five years older than me, Carol's two years older than me, uh, Mary's three years older than me, and we'd all come here in the 80s and the 90s, and um, now Jimmy and Danny, but when we were coming in the 80s, I'd come with my friends, Carol would come with her friends, and Michael would come with his friends and all that, but we would we would hang out together. You know, you want to go maybe other places that you think are a little more fancy and whatnot, but you still always came back here. And it was just it was the most loyal people and friends and everything. The 50th anniversary. And as you'd expect, brand name. You've been coming here for a long time. Do you know the origin of the brand name? Oh, sure, yeah. Chop off the hand to win Ireland and, you know, the guy, the boat race, and chop off the hand, throw it on shore, and yeah. yeah. No, what, what happened was there was two clans in Northern Ireland fighting to see who would be king of Ulster County. So they decided to have one warrior from each clan row across a river and the first one who lands on the other side would be king. One's leading, the guy in the second boat cut his hand off, picked it up, threw it on land. He was so brave. That's where the bloody red hand the balls come from. They run the bar like they live their life. I mean, my dad is a maniac, and he'll do some crazy things. Like, I mean, my dad doesn't drink, and people are like, that guy's the drunkest guy in here. He's crazy enough without drinking. <laughs> I mean, he'll come up with like a one-man band and play. And he, Benny Hanna slippers, slippers, weird hats. He'll just start screaming at the customer, at the employees in front of people. You're like, there, there are customers here. I think my most favorite moment um, is uh, when somebody else is getting yelled at, not me. <laughs> you know, so. Oh, yeah, Jack. Oh, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He, you know, he rules with the iron fist. A lot of good times, crazy stories. Probably stuff I can't tell right now because it's going to the family. On Sundays at about 5 o'clock, Two hours before my shift ended, Jack would go to church a couple blocks down. He says it all the time, Alex, I'm leaving, I'll be back in an hour, I'm going to church. Don't smoke my cigar while I'm gone. He turns around, he's walking out of the bar, and Carrie Cheeseboro, who's a very popular guy here, one of the mayors of Dorian's, as Carrie's walking in, Jack's walking by him, and he looks at him and he goes, Hey, you sweet nuts. I burst into laughter, burst into laughter. So, as often happened in Dorian's, we drink too much. And then I get this phone call. And it's not from a woman that I might have slept with, it's from Jack Dorian. And he wakes me up and he says, Chuckster, do you got something of mine? And I say, Jack, I really don't know at all what you're talking about. Why would I have something of yours? It's do me a favor, check the fridge, I'll hold. So with that, I could crawl out of bed, and crawl I did, into the kitchen where I look at the stove, and I see these charred remains of what might have been meat. I open the refrigerator door, and there is a shell section of meat. So for this, I, from every day forward, I was named the 
the beef burglar, Sir Loints a lot, Chuck Steak, Chuck Thief. Cronies, regulars, Fast Freddy, Joe the Boxer, everyone had nicknames. Joey the Tooth. That's actually a real name, T-O-O-T-H. Name here, Dorian. <laughs> Diaper Dan. Yeah, these guys were what I would call real super freaks. They always love talking to the young ladies who come in. Well, everyone knows who I am. I'm Kerry Cheeseboro. I'm Dave Brooks, and I just want to say that Kerry and I are not now, nor have we ever been brothers. Actually, we've been perpetuating that lie for 25 years. For 25 years, we've had you all believing that we're yes. related. I would apologize, but to all the girls that I've misled, yes, you thank enjoyed, you. You enjoyed every thank second you. of it. So, I, want, we, we, I feel guilty. We meant no harm. It's just we know how girls are. The girls like the good guy, the bad guy, and it's worked equally in our favor over 25 years. But we have to come clean now. We're not related at all. <laughs> one time, this is a funny story about my dad, but there's a lot of them, but one sick one is um, I was with my buddy from uh, New Jersey, and I think we're like 14 years old, and, and, and this, the, the building and the bar is the same sewer line, and uh, it backs up. We couldn't unclog it, and there was some big, I don't know what it was, something stuck in the pipe. I'm like, Dad, I, it's not going down. He goes, stick your hand in there. I'm like, Dad, I'm not sticking my hand down there. I don't know, the gloves off, stick your hand down there and pull it out. I'm gonna stick my hand down there. He knocks me over, puts his hand down there, blows something out, and he's like, This is what happens when you're a kid. I'm like, All right, Dad, thanks. I'll see you later. My buddy's like, Your dad's insane. I'm never coming to visit you ever again. I don't remember what year it was, but the Mets were in a playoff game to see if they were gonna be in the Subway Series. 2000. 2000. And I was bartending with Keith, and I'm a Met fan, and my Mets hat on, and at the table in front of the jukebox, was Chuck Knobloch, Derek Cheater, Shane Spencer, and I'm wearing my Mets hat. Chuck Knobloch says, I hope when the Mets win, you take that hat off because it's a Yankee bar. And um, I'll never forget that. And I was like, no, the Mets hat is staying, it's staying on. In 2003, when the Yankees beat the Red Sox uh, on Aaron Boone's home run, pretty much everybody on the team who drank came in here. And so they're all in the back room and everyone's here and people were going crazy because it was huge. And then when Aaron Boone walked in, um, the place gave him a stand ovation with his wife and they, the place partied and all that. And my wife's from Rhode Island and um, she had friends who came down from Rhode Island uh, to watch the game. They were Red Sox fans. And she said that um, after the game lost, they were bummed out. They were sitting in the section where Aaron Boone hit the home run. They were devastated. So they said that they walked in, had a few drinks, and the guy's standing at the urinal, and he hears people talking. He looks to the left of him, it's Aaron Boone going to the bathroom next to him. He turns around, and it's Jared Jader standing behind him, and he's like, you've got to be kidding me. He said he got up and walked out, called Amy, and screamed at her the next day. <laughs> so it's during the summer, and uh, my parent, my mother and everyone else were away. It was me and my dad in the city. And my buddy, Mark, who lives on the west side, we go to this girl's house and we have a bottle of Jack Daniels. And we decide to play quarters with a bottle of Jack Daniels. So we split the bottle in half. I have half a bottle, he has half a bottle. And we play quarters and we finish everything. I wake up the next morning, I was green. <laughs> my dad packed me in the car to go down to Spring Lake, New Jersey. He, didn't, he had the windows up, no AC, and smoking a cigar. And he wouldn't stop once. He wouldn't let me put the window down. Okay, and I was dying, dying. You want to act like a man? You want to drink like a man? You're gonna have to suffer the consequences of a man. I think I stopped drinking for about two days. No, no, I think it was like four months. Oh yeah. And I started up again. Mr. Dorian would drive me home every night because he felt bad because I lived in the West Village. And clearly, it was better for me to spend money on drinks than cab fare. He used to drive me home and smoke a big cigar and not open any windows and keep the roof shut. And there was a dog in the car, uh, Shotzi, a German Shepherd. And he would stop and get the newspaper and he'd leave me double parked. I didn't have a driver's license. And I would sit in the car with the dog and the dog jumped into the front seat. And Mr. Doreen got back in the car and yelled, get in the back seat. And I thought he was talking to me, not the dog. And I dove into the back seat. 
that was nice. This nice. song reminds me of Dorian's. No, seriously, like we would go out to dinner and then we would come here and we're like, we're gonna all meet at Dorian's. It was like, St. almost fire. It's we like had my 10th high school reunion here. That's from Spence. Yeah, we all came back with so much fun. It feels like I never left. That's the craziest feeling. I feel like I literally never left these people. We always stayed open. He believes in staying open all the time. When I get up in the morning, I come here and I stay until about 5 or 6, and then I go. I work a half a day, seven days a week. I, I got a kidney transplant, and I missed a week. But after that, I was okay. One thing that grabbed me about my father was he stays open 365 days a year. And when I asked him why he stays open 365 days a year, he said, because we're, we're in business, and if somebody doesn't have somewhere to go, they know that we're always here to stay, to serve, to serve them, but to give them a place to go. I've, I've been in business with Jack and 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 Johnny and Danny. It's we, they want hands on. I've been to other places, and Jimmy and I have walked down Second Avenue, and the manager is just a hired employee. He has a vision. It's, there's absentee owners. When you have a family-run business, and Poppy was here, and Jack was here, and Carol was here in the morning, and the kids are here, and all of my brothers bartended. I waitressed here for seven years. My older sister worked in the kitchen. My other sister, Mary, she waitressed here for a little bit. I'm really excited that my brother Chris has a boy because now when the sewer backs up downstairs, <laughs> I don't have to run down there and do it. He can do it. It was just a nightmare. All the kids have been running the bar over the decades. You know, it was Johnny and Michael, then it was uh, then it was Chris, and then Danny, and now Jimmy. And it's just gone on for like 25 years, 30 years, and it's just fantastic. It's, it's like a rite of passage living in the Upper East Side and, um, and coming to this bar and having some drinks and meeting up with friends and having a great time. People who are wealthy have people to their house for drinks and dinner. Uh, a saloon like we have is a poor man's living room. They come over, they can have a drink, something. So that's what we've always tried to do, is keep it very personal, know everybody, and take care of them. There could be someone who'd walk in the door one day and have a problem, and they'd find my dad, and he would sit and listen, and he'd be sincere and genuine. Yeah, I think the thing about this place and about Jack, it was that he was a father figure to a lot of people. He would drive people home at night, or he'd take people to dinner. I mean, he was just good to everyone. He, he was just a great protector and a great guy, and he, to this day he's a great guy, and we all love him to death. To stay open this long, you have to be doing something right. And what we try to do is treat it like our own living room and talk to the kids, yeah. Kids that have some problems, they call them, and talk to them. My father passed away uh, in the summer of 91. And uh, I, had, it was early in the week, I had come home, uh, I had got myself my favorite pizza from my favorite pizza parlor, and I decided to lay in bed, and around 10, 10.30 or so, I get a call, landline back then, uh, and I answer the phone, and uh, Harrison, what are you doing? Uh, Jack, I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm fine, thank you for asking, well, he's asked me, how are you? I said, I'm fine, Jack. Harrison, are you hungry? I said, no, Jack, I'm not hungry. It just, are you listening to me, Harrison? Are you hungry? Jack, I just told you, Harrison, pay attention. Are you hungry? Yes, Jack, I'm hungry. So be downstairs in 15 minutes. Put some pants on. Click. I go downstairs. Jack uh, pulls up in the Beamer. I hop in, and we race downtown or midtown to Billy Hawks. And uh, we sit down, and the Jack orders too much food for two of us, but that's what you do. And we talked about life, and parents, and being a parent, and being a son, and being a brother and a sister, and friendships, and 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 relationships in a, in a very sort of large philosophical way. You get your absolution sometimes at Dorian's. You pay for your sins, but you absolve them here. Thanks for the great times, and I love them. Every time I move homes, which is a lot, the first thing I put up is a picture of me and Mr. Dorian. Love him. Always the place is full of characters, and he was 
good guy, great character. To me, it was like how I think about my childhood, like how I think about my adolescent years. What makes this place stories is the Dorian family is what makes it, that sets it apart from any other place. It's certainly the family, it's good people and a great time. Good friends, good friends, you know. I meet a lot of good people here and the Dorian family themselves, very all very nice people, so that's why. I stay here. Dude, it definitely sets like a different vibe. That you walk in here, you feel different than if you go to any other bar. Yeah, you feel like you're at home. It's always been a place that uh, is, a, is a second home. And Mr. Dorian and uh, Mrs. D uh, were like second parents to me. And this was a sort of place that it was a family. I've known all the Dorians. They've been great to me over the years. Uh, it's always great to come up here and see them. You know, it was. Uh, it was going out to a really fun place and being able to see people that you knew and really liked on a regular basis. There's no place that's quite like, quite like Dorian's. And there's a lot of a lot of attention to, to Jack and the kids, but Mrs. Dorian, she's pretty special. It's like a big reunion. I love it. It's great. I can't wait. You know what? They should do it every year. It's fantastic. Well, it feels like family because they all feel like family to us, and we're very close to the people. And we've stayed close to them over the years. So they all become like family. Everyone talks about my dad. Well, my mom was home all the time. I was taking care of another kid. She's like the most amazing person in the world. She was the best mom. She's a saint to put up with that maniac. And I tell everyone my parents' marriage works because they're both in love with the same person. Him. And no matter how angry we might get at them or the boys fighting with my dad over the air about business, being here or whatever, Everyone really, we all love each other, and my dad and mom really instilled that never going to bed angry. And there have been great parents, and we're really lucky to have them. We're, we're proud that we're married almost 50 years. And the secret to being married this long is always listen to the wife. Never wrong. Always listen to her. Yeah, <laughs> so much. She's serious. <laughs>